Hello there, I'm Black Bright. Thank you for welcoming me into your homes, into your space, and hopefully in your hearts. Um, if you like what I talk about, you're welcome to subscribe, you're welcome to share, you're welcome to engage with my lovely subscribers. And yeah, um, I talk about a variety of things. Um, sometimes it's from a news perspective. Sometimes it's to empower and to make people feel better about themselves. Sometimes it's just to simplify information. You know, I talk about legislation sometimes. If there's anything new uh, with regard to immigration, I'll talk on that. But basically, I just like to inform and raise awareness. Um, Yes, so today I wanted to talk about um, our skin colour. And it's inspired by Mauna Kutonin, who is a freedom fighter and an African cause activist, who says we should not blame our skin colour. And I was thinking to myself, how would I behave if my skin colour wasn't an issue, or if I didn't believe my skin colour wasn't an issue. How would that make me feel when I wake up in the morning? How would I behave differently? And you know the funny thing was, when I thought about my skin colour not being an issue, I automatically felt proud and upright and confident and I think somewhere deep in our psyche or maybe just my psyche there is something that tells me deep down inside that my skin color is an issue. So when I read this piece by Mauna Kutonin I felt I needed to share it with you because there might be many of us who feel our skin colour is the reason why we're in the situation we are in. Now, we can't get away from racism. We can't get the w away from unfair treatment. We can't get away from the police using excessive force on our men. We can't get away from racial profiling. We can't get away from racism and stereotyping. All of those things exist. In certain parts of the world, segregation exists. So, on the one hand, I'm not quite sure where Kutonin is coming from when he says we should not blame our colour um, for our predicament, but I still like his thought process because it is liberating. And if we can reach that point where we truly, truly believe our colour is of no consequence and we don't blame our colour on our failures, on the fact that we're not where we want to be, that we can't get where we want to be, we can't get up of the employment ladder. Because remember, we don't have to depend on someone else to give us a leg up. We don't always, there are so many ways we can use our own talents. Remember, God gave each and every one of us a talent that we are able to use and exploit and make money from. And like I've said in a previous video, the man who had um, one talent, he buried it. The one who had two talents, he went out and doubled his talents. And the one who had five talents, he doubled his talents. When you have talents, you have to examine what those talents are. What are you good at? What can you do for hours on end without even thinking about? That is where your talent is. That is where your gift is. That is where you can make money from. And so, yes, on the one part, on one hand, you can say we are... Um, we have been colonized because of our color. We, you know, we are victims of racism because of our color. 
and we lose out on opportunities because of our colour, we're segregated because of our colour. On the one hand, we can do that, but on the other hand, we can take charge of our individual lives and each individual moment in our lives that we have control over. Everyone has control over something. It's just that maybe it's a bit late in the day. Maybe you haven't realised this before. Maybe you think, oh, it's a bit too late. Maybe you think, oh, well, I could have bought a house or I could have invested in a house, but I didn't. I could have done that job, but I didn't. Don't beat yourself up for what you didn't do. That's not going to get you anywhere. But start thinking about what can I do now with what I've got? You've lost your job. What can I do with what I've got? The system is geared against us at the moment. You can't get money under the table. You can't cold call. You can't turn up at somebody's yard and say, can I do your garden? You can't turn up anywhere and say, can I do cleaning? Because everybody is sceptical about everybody. But there are ways to exploit your natural God-given talents. Anyway, with that backdrop, I am going to let you know a little bit about who Mauna Coating is and what he says about not blaming our colour on our failure. Okay, so Mauna Kutonin is a freedom fighter and African cause activist. He believes in the power of useful and relevant information that empowers people to take action and changes their destiny. He's also the founder of Silicon Africa. Silicon Africa is the innovative hub for Internet of Things um, and information technology IT in the north of Africa. The new city, Silicon Africa, will connect the African countries between each other, the African continent with the world and the world with the universe. That's an ambitious project. So, Mauna Kutonin wrote, A lot of Africans think that the in Europeans enslaved and colonised them because of their skin colour. He said that's a lie. That's false. And to say it or believe it is false. And we shouldn't think that way. He says Africans were not colonised because their skin was black, but they were colonised because they were colonisable. They were colonised because they were weak and easy to manipulate. And that goes for a lot of black people now. Too trusting, too spiritual, too... Um, not goody goody, but you know, self serving. You know, I think you know, the Bible has such a, um, an influence that spiritual upbringing that come, goes down from generation to generation that makes us feel as though we have to be good or we have to sacrifice and all those kind of things. So that is. Um, so that's why he's saying that we were easy to manipulate or our ancestors were easy to manipulate. That's why the police and the people in charge don't like the youth anymore because the youth don't have that, that mindset. The youth are much more rebellious. They're much more straight talking. And because they speak the same language, because they're born in this country, they're much more threatening. And so that's why they bound most of them in jail. Um, the Japanese colonised China not because of their skin colour, but because at the time the Chinese were weak. The Mongols colonised the Russians not because of their skin colour, but because at the time the Mongols were stronger and the Russians were weaker. Cortes colonised Mexico not because of the Indian skin colour, but because his men were stronger and strategised better than the Indians. Of course, saying we were enslaved and colonised because we were weak and unprepared puts the full responsibility of our plight on us. It means our situation is limited to historical circumstances and it's our responsibility to reverse that. However, Thinking that our plight is due to our skin colour lifts the responsibility from us to something outside of our control, i.e. skin colour. 
As we cannot change our skin colour, this means our domination is permanent, a fate of God's will unless we change our skin colour, which is impossible. So, he says we are not dominated because of our skin colour, we are dominated because our ancestors were weaker, and we, their descendants, are still weak enough to be kept under colonialism. The moment we would become stronger, and I'm assuming that psychologically as well as physically, no one can ever dominate us. And remember, um, I'm still trying to remember this lady's name, the one who said I could have freed more slaves if, if their minds hadn't been enslaved. Oh, her name is on the edge of the tip of my tongue. Ah, oh. I'm sure you know who I mean, but yeah, you know, until we take the chains off of our minds, that way of thinking, that way that's so deep within so many of us that we don't even realise, we wake up as though it is a part of our DNA when it's not. It's not our inheritance to be subordinate. So what he is saying is that our oppression is circumstantial. It's not because of our skin colour. So what do you want to do about that? What do you want to say about that? Is there a way that you can think differently? Because they say, as a man thinketh, so is he. You change the way you think, you change the outcome. And just supposing you did think, woke up tomorrow and thought, okay, psh, nobody cares about my skin colour. My skin colour doesn't make a difference. I am going out there as though I'm the same as everybody else. Just try to think how that would make you feel. Just kind of imagine it and just get that feeling. I mean, some of you already have it. Some of you say, you know, some of you will say, I'm black and I'm proud. And, you know, you have that air of confidence and you have that, you know, that self-confidence and, um, uh, what's the word, assertiveness. And you do demand and you do ask, but I'm not talking about, um, the arrogance of or taking on an almost entitled um, persona. But I'm just asking you to imagine if skin colour didn't matter to the world and you stepped outside tomorrow and skin colour didn't matter, what would you do differently? How would you behave? What would be your first point of call? That's all I'm just saying. Just food for thought. And that's all for now. Bye-bye.